This is lesson 51 for anyone that missed it or needs to rewatch it. Go ahead and pause the video um, if you want to do it on your own or follow along. Find the missing part to make each equation true. So we're using what we understand of exponents, and I always ask students to come up. So we get m to the fourth times m to the negative seventh. What is that equal to? Well, the rule is if we're multiplying by the same base, we multiply any coefficient. One times one is one, and then add exponents. So four plus negative seven, we get m to the negative third. Awesome. Number two, we have c to the eighth over c to the something equals c to the sixth. So what's the question mark here? Right? And a student said two, and I'll say, yeah, how did you get that the question mark equals two for number two? And they said, because it's you have to do eight minus the question mark equals c to the sixth. So it has to be two, because eight minus two is six, so two. Fantastic. And how about the last one? If we have c to the fourth times c to the what equals c to the fourth, again, the rule is keep the base the same and add the exponents. What's the only thing that the question mark could be? Well, it has to be 0. Because c to the 0 times c to the fourth is c to the fourth. Great. Hope that went well for you. So we're coming back from um, thinking about, oh, no, sorry. Just to recap, we kind of have some notes here. So 2 to the negative fourth, we proved, is 1 over 16, which equals 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 1 over 2 to the fourth. So the general rule, again, is Anything, any base to the negative power, we're going to write it as 1 over the base as a positive power. So 5 to the negative third is 1 over 5 to the third. Negative 3 to the negative fourth is 1 over, keep the base the same, make our exponent positive, but put it underneath the fraction. And so we also hinted at this idea of the opposite rule, right? If you have 1 over 2 to the 4th, you can move it up and say that that is 2 to the negative 4th. So if we have 1 over a to the b, that's the same as saying a to the negative b power. Oh, okay. So um, it's sometimes useful to turn positive exponent form that are in the denominator as to its negative form in the numerator. So 1 over y to the second is keep our base and make our exponent negative. And 1 over 10 squared, take our base, this is a positive exponent in here, we're going to write as a negative exponent like so. Okay. Great. And so then I wanted to give you some practice to do this. I think everyone would be pretty good. Um, I'm going to just put the answers down, but if you had questions, you could bring it up in class. Notice that I don't change the base. I only change the exponent to its positive form in the denominator. Because that's what it means. That's what we discovered. Boom. And then going the opposite, we can do it too. 1 over 8 squared is 8 to the negative 2. And 1 over 10 to the 5th is 10 to the negative 5th. 1 over 2 to the 3rd is 2 to the negative 3rd. 1 over 6 to the 7th is 6 to the negative 7th. 
keep the base the same, right, of our denominator exponent, and then move it up as a negative exponent. Cool. And so that repetitive motion is just to get us to think about it, just keep pushing ourselves. So those are the answers to classwork two. Okay, kind of an important moment, which is kind of annoying. Mathematicians throw this word simplifying around a lot. You know what I mean. And simplifying has so much stuff, right? When we ask to simplify something, it can mean one of a hundred things, or just wrapped into the same exact thing multiple times, right? Simplifying can mean a lot, but in the end, we're trying to make it as simple as possible. So mathematicians do not want to see any negative exponents or zero exponents in a fully simplified expression. So all bases with negative exponent must be in their positive form, and bases with a zero exponent must simplify out to be the number one. So 10 to the negative fourth is not simplified. We have to write it as 1 over t to the fourth. 3r to the negative fifth, well, 3 has an exponent of 1 times r to the negative fifth. So 3 is actually OK, but it's r to the negative fifth. We have to write as 1 over r to the fifth. And this isn't simplified because we can multiply this across. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times r to the fifth is r to the fifth. Now we're simplified. Even in this one, let's try this one. It's x times y to the third times 1 over z to the fifth. But we can simplify this a little bit more. And this would be great if you got it. But we're going to go straight across. x, y to the third, 1 is 1xy to the third over 1 times 1 times z to the fifth is 1z to the fifth. To be honest, we don't need these ones. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Let's give this a try. 8 to the 0, that's equal to 1. So this is equal to 1 third. This one can't have a negative exponent, so we're going to write as 1 over x to the third over y to the fifth. But we have an issue. This isn't simplified. Mathematicians don't like to see a fraction on top of another part of a fraction. So to resolve that, we need to do 1 over x to the third divided by y to the fifth which is 1 over x to the third times the reciprocal, which is 1 over x to the third y to the fifth. But you can kind of look for a shortcut, right? Forget all that stuff. Is there a way to go from here to here? Notice where y to the fifth started. Where did it stay? Notice where x to the negative third started and where it ended up as x to the third. Mm. Okay, we're going to try to use a little pattern here. We're not going to write out all our steps. You could write this as 2 times 1 over x to the third times 1 over y to the second over z to the fourth and do a bunch. But I have a different approach that I want you to take. Negative exponents will end up moving their location. So 2 is a positive exponent. It's fine where it is. x to the negative third is not. It will become 1 over x to the third. And what will happen is it will drop to the denominator. Using the numerator, it will drop to the denominator. y to the negative second is 1 over y to the second. And so it turns y to the second into the denominator. See? Psh, psh z to the fourth is fine where it is, it's just z to the fourth because it doesn't have a negative exponent. And there we go. 
So look where we started. Look at the math that we kind of would have to do and look at our answer. All right, so I want you to give this a try, right? So, simplify these, okay? You can't have zeros or negative exponents in your final answer using some of our rules. Pause me now, give it a try. Then you can watch me as I write down the answers. Okay, I got the first six there. Maybe you had questions, you wanted to bring it into class. Okay, so there's the answers to classwork one. They're a little bit tricky, that's okay. All right, we got to talk about, there's one more piece, and that's what happens if you have a negative exponent in the denominator. Well, we can't have one because it's not simplified if we do. So I'm going to write as 3 over... 1 over y to the fifth. Yep, and there you go. No negative exponent. There's our answer. Except we cannot have a fraction within a fraction. It's not simplified. So if you do 3 divided by 1 over y to the fifth, which is keep, change, flip to answer, so you get 3y to the fifth. So, there's a rule though, instead of going through all of this, if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, you write it as 1, and this is going to move up to the numerator, keep the base the same, and make it a positive. Right, and technically there's a 1 in front of the a, so if you wanted 1 over 1, In the end, it's just a over b. So let's apply that to some of these guys. <laughs> All right, number one. Okay, I could write it as s to the sixth over one over r to the third and do the math, or you could just simply know r to the negative third, r to the six, excuse me, I mean, s to the six is going to stay where it is, and r to the negative third is going to shift up to the numerator, put it over one. That one stays where it is, and if you want, you just say 6s r to the third. Sorry s to the 6, r to the 3rd. All right, number 2. Can't have negative exponents. So we could write this as 1 over a to the 4th, 1 over b to the 9th, but that's just wonky. In the end, a is, becomes 
moves to the denominator, and b to the negative ninth moves up to the numerator as a positive nine. Because if you keep change flip, this is what you'll end up with. All right, another one here. Okay, we're going to simplify. J to the fifth is good. K to the negative six has to shift down as K to the sixth. J to the second is fine the where it is. K to the negative fourth has to move up. Oh, but maybe I shouldn't have done that, right? Maybe I should have done the math first. We have J to the five minus two times k to the negative 6 minus negative 4. Zoom that out for a second. All right. When you divide by the same base, you subtract the exponents. We get j to the third times k to the negative 2, which becomes j to the third over k to the second. So I wanted you to practice this. I think this is to finish for homework. Remember, you can't have negative exponents. Think about our rules. We're going to get to the next one in a second. Um, I guess we could do the answers. No, we won't. We'll pause.